Hello everyone, welcome back. It's time for another Kaguya Summer reaction, and this time we are up to Season 2, Episode 7. We are definitely at the halfway mark now, and it seems appropriate since the last episode just finished another sort of mini arc within the series about the election. So today, I guess we get to start a new thing with the new student council, which has a new member, Miko Ino and we get to see how the whole sort of dynamic changes after that. Last episode was quite sweet and unexpectedly emotional, I guess. I don't know what I expected from last episode, but what I got was definitely what I wanted. We had the, just briefly, Ishigami did uh, revealed sort of his conflicting thoughts, I guess, regarding Miko. He's obviously been on the receiving end of the, um, what is it, the Public Morals Committee, or whatever it is. Um, probably for slacking off, or whatever it is. But at the same time, he also appreciates how hard and earnest she is in her work, and he hates to see someone uh, get laughed at for that sort of thing, so he had sympathy there. And that was a That was a really great realisation, I think, for him to sort of come to that from asking, you know, wanting her to be defeated in a landslide, but then also turning around and saying, I also hate that everyone would laugh at her. So we ended up managing to get what I feel was the best resolution. We kept our student council. We managed to keep Shiragane as president. And he also used his, well, his, I guess, ability to go up during the election speeches and help draw something out of Miko, pre preventing her from just becoming a, you know, a laughing stock, as it were, if she had just sort of kept standing meekly up there, unable to actually put into words any of the things she was trying to say. And so she got to present a stronger side of herself, showing how much that she cared for the school, even if her thoughts and ideas, her campaign promises, might be a little unrealistic and maybe not too appreciated by the rest of the students. At least this way they could also see the source of it came from really wanting the to help elevate the school brand, which, you know, I think is different. It's um it's a different thing when people think you're just going there and you know, poking your nose into their stuff, as opposed to when you're doing it because you care about things. So, yeah, I think that changed a lot of people's opinions about it, which was great. That did result in Shirogane's team, or, you know, his uh, friends, getting a little bit nervous about the whole thing, particularly Shinomiya, who'd worked so hard to present him with an almost unlosable situation. So yeah, they were a little afraid that he'd gone off script and was just going to throw the whole thing, but uh, yeah, fortunately it all worked out for the best, and I'm glad to, yeah, I'm glad it did, and I'm really looking forward to see where things go. So I managed to ramble for four minutes, so I'm just going to go ahead and get into the next one. So this one, episode seven. Kaguya wants to undress him, Kaguya wants to make him let go. Miyuki Shirogane wants to make her read, and Kaguya Heart Aquarium. Right, so I think we've got a bit of stuff going on this time. Just a reminder that these are full-length timer reactions, which means you'll need your own copy of the show to watch along with me. I'll do a countdown, there'll be a timer one way or another <laughs> um, in my video, which will help you be able to sync up your own copy. So yeah, watch along with me, enjoy it. The copy that I'm watching on Anime Lab does not put any logos and stuff before the episode. When I push play, it'll be going straight into it. Um, it looks like, based on this initial frame, that it's also not starting on the opening either. Just going straight into it. So, here we go in 3, 2, 1, go.
Panzer. What did Chica say? Ha. Ah. The man horse. <laughs> oh, Kagia. I wonder if Shiki is a bit of a perv. I like that phrase. I like that thing she said before. Oh. Just earlier where she commented about Ishigami's usual verbal switchblade. I think she'd commented another episode about him, um, what is it, verbally beating women or something like that. Yeah, we've got some new characters. I actually wonder if they'll show up much this episode. I'd expect to see Miko at the very least. So now what? She wants to find out whether he's wearing boxer briefs. The voice actor is so good. How do you just seg into that like that? From T to underwear.
Oh, no. Well, that's even worse. It's <laughs> <laughs> the absolute best time for Miko to enter. She's so embarrassed that she can't even say it. Recently in mind is the... It's the FF7 remake um, and Massage Saints. Oh, these two. Fuck. <laughs> Oh, 
And she's gonna walk in again and something's gonna go. <laughs> no. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, boy, Mika, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> what is he doing? Let's have a shoujo manga like romance. It still works. She's already read it, I suppose. Oh, uh, maybe not. Oh. Mm. Yeah, it worked because he can say... Mm. He doesn't even have to bring it up directly himself. Oh my god, spoilers! <laughs> Miko is like Ishigami from the f <laughs> from the first um season. Try to poison her.
Oh, that was nice of Miko to come back. Oh, they did read it. Oh, man. That was good. It was interesting seeing... Oh. Sorry, it's kind of hard to talk over the ending music. Um... Let's see how much. Oh, whoa, there's... All right. Looks like there's way more. I did feel like that seemed a bit short. But yeah, it was not a bad move to use um, Miko Eno as a... Sort of in the Ishigami one-shot repeated joke role for a little while. I mean, I assume that she's not going to stay there. After all, Ishigami didn't stay doing that for that long, now I think about it. But it was very funny to have... Very funny to have her just keep showing up at the most inopportune times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at their eyes. Kaguya Sama Love is War Syndrome. A computer geek with a supposedly dark past. Shoujo manga brain syndrome.
He has a penguin like a pillow thing, doesn't he? <laughs> Some noises. And the spell is broken. <laughs> what is this? They're hopeless. Yeah, there's no reason you can't do that. Okay. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> that was extremely bizarre. This was a funny episode. Just straight back into it, I think. After after the actual election arc, which did have sort of a few more of the, I guess, more emotional moments in there, we get to start the back half of season two with, uh, yeah, just straight up silly humor again and yeah that's great just the discussion about underwear types more misunderstandings as usual and uh now we've got a new character to re to react to all of this strangeness um it does give us something different we've had I guess both Ishigami and Chika act as, you know, other people to sort of walk in at weird moments or be there at weird moments and not really understand what's going on. But now they're more part of, like, the main group, so it's interesting having Miko to be the one that walks in and has sort of no idea what's going on again as the rest of the council get up to their crazy shenanigans. Um... Yeah, apart from that, I don't really have much else to think about or to say. It was just it was just funny. It was funny having Ishigami comment about how boring and predictable um 
some of the sort of manga plots can be and how you can sort of tell when they're doing things to try to manipulate you your feelings into you know generating you know making you cry and uh i don't know i i can feel that pretty often i'm a big sucker in general for for that in movies and stories in um in tv shows but i generally don't mind it i don't know what makes the difference for me though i think part of it is that i like that sort of feeling in general it, there are exceptions of course but in general i think i like to find things which can make me feel that and uh even when i can tell what they're doing you know in the case of tv maybe your mo movies then it's they're playing music or they're doing whatever then you know i can tell but i also don't really care so Um, yeah, and I mean, sometimes it works. I can see the manipulation, and I'm like, well, that still hit me. So, you know, good job, good job show, good job story. Um, yeah, I wonder how long before we end up getting more Miko beyond this sort of initial role. Um, could probably see this for like another couple of episodes of her walking in and then just escaping because the student council is just too crazy but i'm looking forward to seeing her interacting with the rest of them to a to a much greater extent as well yeah so that's episode seven done uh what did you think of it yourself how are you with regards to movies stories etc that try to manipulate you into making you cry or do you think that it's you know manipulation in general I don't always feel like it's manipulation. Sometimes people just want to convey a story and it happens to be sad. Um, I know that... I know of some people who instinctively, every time something's trying to be emotional, they always accuse it of trying to be manipulative. Sometimes that's just the story, in my opinion. What do you think? Do you think anything that tries to do this is trying to pull a trick? Tell me in the comments. If you had any other thoughts on the episode, tell me there too. And otherwise, take care. And I'll see you next time. Bye.